Hello, today we're going to have a look at the BAE 146 and more accurately at the thrust modulation system in the BAE 146. So let's go inside out of the noise. Okay, it's still quite noisy inside here, but it's not as bad as outside. Uh, we're going to have a look at this little panel on the side of the cockpit. It's just in front of the co-pilot. Um, it's called the thrust modulation system. It, the thing to be aware about it, it is not an auto throttle. It is here to assist you in operating the engines and I'll explain kind of what it can do along the way. So if we have a look at it, there is a percentage readout of targeted thrust at the top left. There is a, a reference degree centigrade at the top right. We'll get to that of what that means. So if we press Alt and 3, I've configured a custom view specifically on this. So you've got your percentage of engine or percentage, or sorry, or degrees centigrade will be shown up here depending on the mode. At the top right, we've got a, a reference uh, temperature that we can change. Yeah, so you can see I can roll the, the wheels on this and change this. We'll get to what that does. Across the top, you have got indicators for each engine. Then underneath you've got modes for this to operate in. It has takeoff mode, maximum continuous thrust mode, turbine gas temperature mode, descent mode, sink mode, and it also has a control and a master button, and it has a power button obviously. So let's turn it on. So we've just turned on the thrust modulation system. Now, while we're playing with the throttles and watching things change, you are going to hear alerts from the aircraft. We're sat on the parking, with the parking brakes on on the ground. So it is going to start, you know, erupting in alerts while we're playing with this. So before we begin, let's change our view so we can see both the dials for the engines across here and the thrust modulation system, or the TMS first thing we're going to do is hit the test button and that will go through each button lighting up each indicator so if we press test you can see it's going across the engine indicators takeoff mode yes so it went through the modes the sinks and it just made sure everything lit up so everything's fine so the most important one I can show you straight away is sync mode this is probably the easiest place to start what the thrust modulation system can actually do, it has actuators on the throttles. So we've got the throttle levers in the cockpit and they tell the engines what to do. In between those throttle connections and the engines, there are some actuators that are controlled by the thrust modulation system. And it can influence the instruction given to the engine based on the settings we give it. So we are going to say sync and you will see suddenly where the engines weren't quite the same numbers as each other they have now gone to the same numbers as each other. So something that's important for us to see straight away now is that when we hit sync we've got control is N1 and master is 1. What this means is we can use one of the throttle sticks and get the others to follow it. So that's master. Yeah, we're saying which of the throttle sticks, and that can be one or two. Oh, excuse me, I just sneezed. Uh, so the master can be one or two, so we can use the engine number one or engine number two to control the rest of the aircraft. Okay, so that's the leftmost engine and the inboard left engine. So what we can also do is say, well, we want the this TMS system to listen to the data from, this is the control data, from N1 or N2. So in other words, this is going to watch N1 or N2, and it's going to use the data from N1 or N2. So we'll do it both on one to keep it simple for ourselves. And we'll zoom out slightly so we can see the throttle sticks and the gauges. And all we're going to do is jam throttle number one forwards a lot so you can see we've got sync on let's just turn the alarm off oh, we're still going to get the clacks on anyway we have got sync on 
but the engines haven't followed number one but you will also notice lights have lit up across the other engines on the TMS that means we have deviated let me just close that back down again so what those lights meant so they've gone out now look and that makes sense the actuators between our throttles and the engines are only allowed to change the thrust given to the engine by a certain delta or difference from what the throttles are say or you know what the throttles are at in the cockpit it's not allowed to go off on a mind of its own and massively deviate from where the throttles are so when you see an indicator lit up on one to four it's actually saying you need to move the throttle in that direction to get me in the ballpark of the range where the actuator can take me the rest of the way so the actuators can't don't have the full range of movement that the throttle sticks have they have an amount either way of where the throttle stick is does that make sense so let's try that again so if we go engine number one and they are sinking yeah we've stayed within the range they can follow the needles are staying in line if we go suddenly a lot we've gone too much look and it can't follow if we come back down if we go slowly edge it back down to where the, the rest of the levers are you'll see these look we're looking for these lights going out and there they go so it's close enough so it looks like about 20% of the range doesn't it 25% of the range as long as you're within that kind of range you're okay okay let's just shut the alarm off again the planes probably having a fit thinking what are we doing to it so that gives you an idea of what these four numbers across the top are doing that is the status of the actuators and whether they can follow what you're instructing or whether you need to move the throttle levers to give them a chance to do it okay so let's turn sync back well, we can't turn sync off actually once we switched it on you can turn the whole thing off and turn it back on and sync won't be on but notice the engines are broadly in sync but they've fallen out again look within moments of switching it off so engines will vary from each other just through wear and tear you know there, there's thousands of moving parts in each engine and the wear and tear on any of those is going to influence the the final outcome of the temperature and the speed of the engine okay so let's go through the modes takeoff mode if we press it it is immediately said I'm going to take the engines to 93 percent notice it hasn't done anything but all of the lights have come on so let's go and press alt and three so we can see this clearly we pressing takeoff took it to 93 percent that's essentially a max the max safe engine power for a takeoff before you do that though what you would do is come down here and look at the outside air temperature it's actually about 19 degrees which corresponds so you change the reference centigrade up here to match the outside air temperature yeah and that it calculates based on that because obviously if we change this you can see the numbers change so it's calculating the the engine power to use for a takeoff at this temperature now what you can do is turn the temperature up which derates the engines so you're using less thrust so if we turn that up to 39 degrees see 49 degrees the percentage is coming down so you can trick the aeroplane into using less thrust than is necessary and that's what you will have heard being called a flex temperature so you're choosing a temperature that is higher than the ambient temperature outside yeah and it derates the engine so the engine isn't being used as high you're not as, as much thrust so there's less stress on the engine and the engine will last longer and won't need to be serviced as often so that's what a flex temperature actually is you are giving the the, mathema the mathematical algorithms about the thrust the incorrect outside air temperature okay you'll notice we've gone to takeoff mode 
and we've got 93 percent but the engines aren't doing it but the indicators have lit up meaning we're not close enough to 93 percent on the throttle throws for that to happen so let's go back over here and keep it in view so we've got the throttles and the lights in view and we're going to ease them forwards and you'll see when it gets close enough the lights will go out on the TMS panel across the four engines and it will carry on taking the engines up to 93% all on its own so we're getting there are we close enough yet? hoping to get to a point where I haven't taken them all the way there and it will do it all on its own. There it goes, the switching off. And the engines are still climbing, look. I've stopped moving the throttles, but the thrust is still increasing. They're coming up to 93, and look at the percentages. 90... 92.5, 92, 92. Now, remember the sync button. We're going to press it. Notice when we put sync on, it comes out of takeoff. So sync is working directly on the throttle positions, not on both. That's an important one to remember. Okay, so we're going to pull the engines back. Okay, so maximum continuous thrust. Let's find out what that one does. If I press it, it's going to say 857 degrees yeah and that's measuring the temperature so that is the the highest continuous temperature that the engines can withstand because if you go into takeoff mode it will cut off after five minutes okay let's go and get rid of that alarm because takeoff is an unsafe Takeoff mode is an unsafe mode to leave the engine in. They can't sustain 93% thrust forever. Yeah, it will actually damage the engine eventually. So you put them into maximum continuous thrust mode for your climb out, which could last for 20 minutes, half an hour, climbing to altitude. But that's the maximum you can have, and it disregards the T-ref, the, you know, the reference temperature. It's just saying, no, that's the highest temperature you're going to get to. TGT is the turbine gas temperature. And we actually can change this, and th that's the number down here. So the number here represents, it's a digital readout of the number here on the rollers. So if we press Alt on 3 to get our view across here, we can actually move that. Notice all four indications have come up meaning the throttles are idle so they're too far away for the engines to accelerate enough to get the gas temperature up to 823 degrees centigrade but we can change this here we can go for whatever we want so this is the way you would do cruise control yeah while you're flying along at cruise you would look at the temperature of the engines so if you look over here you've got the gas temperature so you could read them you could say, OK, we're cruising. Say if we were cruising and it was 454, which it never would be, but we could tune in 454 and say TGT, and it will hold that gas temperature across the engines. Descent mode puts the engines into 60% immediately. Yeah, and it's trying to do that now that they're moving because it was close enough to idle. So the engines have crept forward to 60%. What 60% actually represents is the lowest engine speed that supports the hydraulic systems on the aircraft. Yeah? And you can actually see, and, and the electrical requirements of the generators on the aircraft, you can actually see that will change if we change the draw on those systems. So if we turn on the anti-ice for example and come and look down it's gone up to 63 from 60 
So it wants 63% of the engines to support operating that electrical draw. If we wanted the engine anti-ice on, that's gone to 67 degree uh, percent. Sorry, that it wants as uh, you know, that's your lowest idle to sp support continuous ice protection. So during your descent, that's the minimum based on the configuration. It will going to show you the minimum percentage, and the engines are going for it. Obviously, if the throttles are wildly away from there, so if I slam the throttles forwards, the the control, yeah. The throttles are going to and are going to do it. If I throw, use one of them, the others can't follow, and it's saying engine number one is far too far ahead of 60% for the actuators to move it back to what we've asked for. Does that make sense? So obviously, if we move it back within range of it, if we get it to say there, and the light has gone out. So that's close enough, and the engines are actually going to disregard that stick position and pull engine number one back down to 60% for us, and it's doing that for us now. Okay, so let's pull that back to idle. So, we saw sync earlier, so sync is going to... It, notice sync doesn't switch across any of the others, it just synchronises the, the numbers across the engines. Sometimes it takes a few minutes for it to happen. So, we also saw control is the other engines are going to follow the data from the engine indicated here. Master is, this is the throttle stick that this is going to read from, essentially. Um, and that's it. So, using those various modes, you can control the aircraft safely. So takeoff is going to get you off the runway, operating the engines, getting them to, you know, the, the a safe takeoff amount of thrust. After five minutes, that will turn off on its own, and it's up to you as the pilot to switch on the MCT, max continuous thrust, which would uh, you do your climb out, and then you've got TGT for your cruise, which is turbine gas temperature, where you get to moderate the engines with the throttles to find out the temperature you want then you can dial it in press TGT and the engines will stay there on their own and then obviously descent mode which we've already covered so hopefully that's been useful and given you some idea of what this thrust modulation system does or the, the TMS system it's to help you it doesn't do things for you yeah so you get engines in the ballpark of the typical phases of flight and it will line them up for you and get them all to follow one of the engines to make sure that they're that they all match I mean if you d if you leave it switched off all the time you can just move the engines around and you know you can wildly deviate you know the, the amount of thrust from each engine the reason for using things like sync for example is to bring them in line with each other so the aircraft has an equal amount of thrust so it's efficient through the air which might not you know it might only sound like a tiny thing if the en if one engine's got half a percent more thrust than another but over a 5 600 mile trip or longer than that a 1000 mile trip that could actually end up to a lot of fuel wasted through drag because the airplane wasn't flying straight okay so there you go that's the thrust modulation system hopefully you found that useful and I'll see you again soon